Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you one of the best games ever or maybe this is even the best game ever which was played at Spanish Championship. With white pieces playing Fide Master Fernando Vizier Segovia who won the Spanish Championship in 1968 and 1972 and his opponent is Juan Betancourt Curbelo. The game was played in 1968, and it was in that same year that Vizier Segovia became Spanish champion. But before starting our game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. As I've already mentioned, in this game Vizier Segovia had white pieces and he opened up with e4. Betancourt Curbelo responded with c5, Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and a6. Black goes for neither variation against which white is choosing the fisher sozin attack, bishop c4. This is one of the most ambitious lines in neither variation where white is taking under control the d5 square and is increasing the pressure on a2 g8 diagonal. The variation was one of Russian chess player Veniamin Sozin's favorites, however it was Bobby Fischer who contributed immensely to the development of the theory and only then, starting from 1950s, the line became very popular. Here's black plate e6, bishop b3 and bishop e7, not the most popular line, usually in here black is either playing b5 or knight bd7, but in our game we have bishop e7, bishop e3, another popular alternative is going for an immediate attack with g4, but in our game we first see the development of the dark squared bishop, black castled kingside, queen e2, still g4 was playable, queen c7, white castles queenside, b5, a3, knight c6, king b1, bishop d7, and there it goes finally, g4 is on the board, rook c8, I have to tell you that moves like e5 is not good because White can always respond with knight f5, that's why in our game we have rook c8. Now comes f4 and e5, which is premature. It was better first to exchange the knights and only then play e5. And the problem with this straightforward e5 is that in here, by putting the knight on f5, White could gain advantage. This move is simply demoralizing black's position. But in our game, after e5 with knight takes c6, black recaptured with a light squared bishop and g5 with which white is going for a tricky pawn sacrifice and is allowing black to win this central pawn on e4. We have the exchange of knights on e4 and rook g1, he takes f4, bishop takes f4, right now the light squared bishop is hanging, that's why black moved it back on g6, still keeping the pressure on c2, but the downside of this move is that this allows white to go for h4, h5 with a tempo, instead playing queen c6 followed by d5 and strengthening the bishop on e4 is better, but in our game we have bishop g6, here comes h4, rook e8, with this move black is creating bishop takes g5 threat, but white cold heartedly proceeded with his h pawn push and played h5 inviting black takes g5 and black went for it but it turns out that this is a mistake after which by going for a queen sacrifice white is managing to gain a ferocious attack instead it was better to put the bishop on f8 if queen h2 then bishop f5 black is doing okay but in our game after h5 we have bishop takes g5 and in here instead of moving away his queen actually I have to tell you that according to stockfish queen g2 is stronger Vizier Segovia went for a queen sacrifice and he played h takes g6 all black could do was to accept the queen sacrifice after which we see g takes f7 check look at this monster on f7 guys this is the pawn which a few moves earlier was standing on h2, right? Black played king h8 and bishop takes d6. White is also winning that pawn and only then will win this bishop. Queen c6, which turns out to be a mistake. 
Well, in here, it turns out that the only move which allows black to keep the balance is queen b7. Here is the idea, knight rook takes g5, then rook f2 with the idea of rook takes f7. In this case, black is managing to defend accurately. If bishop takes f7, then queen takes f7, and if bishop e5, then rook g8. Still, black is holding, and according to the engine, the position is equal. But black failed to find this defensive line, instead played queen c6, after which white's attack becomes irresistible. Rook takes g5 is on the board. In return, black played rook takes c2, and bishop e5 with a direct mating threat. Rook c1 check, and king h2, another beautiful move. Still, this mating thread is hanging in the air. That's why black neutralized it by playing queen h6. But now comes rook takes g7, this time the threat is rook g8 checkmate. All black could do was to give up his queen. And now you have to be careful, because if a move like Bishop takes g7 check, then in this case it's black who is winning. That's why after queen takes g7 we have rook takes c1. Another cold hearted move by Vizier Segovia. If queen takes e5, then rook takes c8 check is coming and white is winning on the spot. White can go for a queen promotion or rook g8 check and the game is over. By the way, let me figure out, what if I go for a bishop promotion? Is this also winning? Yes, looks like that. Yes, if king g6, then rook c6 check. And then white is winning, black queen, and the game as well. So it turns out that the bishop promotion also works. This is crazy, guys. But let's go back to our main game. So after rook takes c1, we have rook f8 and rook g1. This final combination is simply brilliant, guys. If queen takes e5, then rook g8 check is coming with a mate to follow. Let's go for a rook promotion and we have a checkmate. That's why black made a desperate rook takes f7 move, but after bishop takes f7, black resigned because there is just no way out. Black king is getting checkmated in three moves. Let's enjoy this final combination once again without deviating from our main game. So, after, let's start from where? From move 26. So, after bishop e5, black played rook c1 check and king a2. All black could do was to play queen h6. And there it goes, rook takes g7. Black gave away his queen and this time we have rook takes c1. Rook f8, rook g1. Rook takes f7, and after bishop takes f7, we have a resignation. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find the winning line for white. I can give you a hint, and I have to tell you that you have to rely on the power of your bishop. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video, take care.